is Syrian Typhlosion has access to one of the strongest fire type moves in the game, being a spread move fire type attack in eruption, able to do so much damage under manual sun. And this team got second place at a online tournament in Regulation Asia. And we're going to be trying it out and seeing how well it can perform. This is a Manual Sun Hisui Typhlosion team. The idea of the team, just do as much damage as you possibly can under the Tailwind. We have the Covert Cloak Whimsicott with Terra Water. That's able to be pretty bulky, actually, because this Whimsicott isn't actually invested in max speed. It is pretty bulky to tank attacks, stick around on the field. Keep those sunny days up encore pressure have tail and speed control that if it needs to last on the field it's able to it's really nice moon blast for chip encore for disruption sunny day for the weather really solid against peloton or caladon being very common in this format so being able to power up the typhlosion while weakening the water type moves that are super effective against typhlosion is very helpful and then the tailwind for speed control we have the Choice Specs Blaze Hisuian Typhlosion, which is a really strong user of Eruption, especially with that Ghost Typing initially, because it is immune to the Fake Out. And with the lead of Hisui Typhlosion and the Cover Cloak Whimsicott, no Fake Outs can affect this lead, which is really strong. Blaze's ability to power up his fire type moves if the Typhlosion does get weakened, it is pretty frail. Frisk is great as an ability for a closed team sheet setting, but since this team was used in an open team sheet setting, Blaze is helpful because you are able to get uh, an ability that actually is useful and can power up the fire type moves while under low HP. Terrifier to just do as much damage as he possibly can with that Terrifier eruption, Heat Wave and Overheat, and Shadow Ball for the coverage. Next up, we have partners such as the water toros with the clear amulets to prevent intimidates from affecting it helps out against king gambit that's really scary for the typhlosion and able to do a lot of damage to the close combat raging bull to help break through these screens intimidates really nice to help pair with typhlosion because it is pretty weak defensively aqua jet fight for priority is super strong as well so able to help with a lot of support and it's pretty fast we have the Blood Moon Ursaluna. This one being a mod is very fast variant that's just able to do a lot of damage under the Tailwind. Able to go for really strong attacks like the Blood Moon and Hyper Voice with the Terra Normal and Earth Power to help out against our Caladon. We have the Technician Wildlands Mouse Hole. This one, Redirection, is very nice because it helps support the Typhlosion because Eruption does get weaker if you do take damage. So just being able to help make sure that Typhlosion is protected and able to dish out really strong damage with that Terra Normal Population Bomb as Mousehold has a really fantastic speed tier for Regulation H as there aren't that many fast Pokemon in the format. Pong can be pretty disruptive. And Redirection, again, just really solid. King Gambit with the Assault Vest is pretty nice for like size spam and able to help out quite a bit with the Sucker Punch priority and just hit other Pokemon that can be annoying. Again, opposing King Gambit with the low kick is pretty nice and able to dish out quite a bit of damage. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Politoed Hisuian Braviary Incineroar Rillaboom Golden Go Palafin. Rain, but guess what? We have sun. <laughs> we do have sun. A sunny day Whimsicott can go pretty strong here and I do like it a lot. So I think I'm going to go with the Whimsicott lead. I think Whimsicott's pretty good for the most part with the Typhlosion. Typhlosion does do pretty strong against their team in general. Partners wise, Poros is not bad, but I don't think it's necessary. I like King Gammon. I like uh, the Blood Moon a lot. Mm, do I like Blood Moon a lot? It does pressure like Golden and Incineroar, which Incineroar mainly the biggest threat to probably the Typhlosion. And maybe the Polytub, but we do have Sunny Day. I'm trying to figure about, okay, I do want King Gambit. I'm just wondering if I want Tauros because it might help out with the Palafin a little bit. Actually, I probably do. I was thinking maybe having a secondary, like, to offensive sweeper under Tailwind, specifically the option to go for a very powerful Blood Moon. It is pretty strong. Again, actually, maybe I should have brought Blood Moon because if I'm trying to weaken the power of the water type moves by using Sunny Day, then I I don't have to worry much about the Palafin. Jet Punch. I was worried because like my plan probably is to tear the Typhlosion early on. But uh, Jet Punch would do too much to Ursa Luna, so it wouldn't be worth it. But then again, Grassy Glide is also super threatening to Blood Moon. So I now that I think about it a little bit more, I do think Tauros is probably still better. Because it's a natural resist. We're going to see the Reelaboom and the Palafin lead. 
And you know what we have? Cover Cloak on the Whimsicott. We always get a sunny day up here. We always get an eruption off because we do have a ghost typing so they can't go for fake out. We can go for sunny day and eruption. The way that they reduce the damage output is by going for Grass Glide and Jet Punch here. But yes, we should be pretty safe. If they want to go Polytoad and want to go for a Jet Punch, guess what? We have Sunny Day, which is manual weather, so we do bypass a lot that they could go for. Now, my only concern is that there's a random scarf on one of these mons, and they go for a pivoting move because they underspeed my Whimsicott, yet somehow outspeed my Typhlosion. Or I guess they could outspeed my Whimsicott because this is a prankster Sunny Day user. So it doesn't matter. Real Boom's gonna switch out. Politoed. Yep, Polito comes out. We should be fine here because we're getting a sunny day. We're getting an eruption off. Very big damage to Palafin. And let's see if the Palafin is stayed in. They go for Jet Punch. They go for Flip Turn. I guess we'll find out the next turn. But Jet Punch does come out. Still does a lot of damage. But uh, Eruption is still going to do a pretty big chunk to this team. So very happy about that. Okay. And Palafin is kind of in a weird spot, but the Grassy Terrain healing is nice because we can go for a Moonblast into the Palafin and we can go for an Eruption here because we're trying to cover if there is a switch or not. Because I don't know if Palafin wants to stay in because the Eruption is still... Or like just Fire Moves in general because you're not exactly sure about the Calcs maybe on the Eruption on the... Assuming Typhlosion, you might want to switch out for the stronger Jet Punch because he would be able to KO in even in Sun afterward. But let's see. I do like the idea of just pressuring the Palafin slot a lot. It could protect, I suppose. But I do have Encore as well. But I am expecting potentially a switch out anyway from Palafin, either this turn or the next turn. We are going to see the Palafin switch out, which is excellent. And that is going to be the Incinera coming in. So we do still get a really strong Moonblast and Eruption off which is still pretty big. And I don't think Polito's Scald will finish off the Typhlosion. And we can save our Typhlosion for the following. Moonblast going to come out into Incineroar. Not a bad chunk of damage. Here comes an Eruption. Still really good damage. All right. What does the Polytoad go for? Scald? Or does it have a different move? If it's Wetter Ball, I guess it could target the Whims. Oh, I see when. Okay. We have Cover Cloak and Typhlosion basically did not take that much damage, which is beautiful here. Okay. We absolutely love to see that, actually. Because I don't think the Incineroar is going to be likely faster. We could go for a Moonblast and an Eruption into the Incineroar slot and pick up the Knockout in Incineroar. I could Encore to Politoed. So it's locked into Icy Wind, but I don't think it's necessary. I think I'm just going to go for a Moonblast into Incineroar and I'm just going to go for Eruption. Once again, just put on the offensive pressure. Like, I don't see a reason not to. Like, I'm the one with the most offense. Uh, the sunny day is just going to be super helpful because that Palafin just really cannot do any damage. The Palafin is weakened. Uh, Reelaboom can never switch in on this eruption unless you want to risk Reelaboom, which uh, might not be good. Getting rid of Incinera is huge because I think King Gambit under the sun kind of just destroys the rest of my opponent's team unless they have a fighting move on the... Alephin, which I guess I can consider and go for the Terra Fairy, but it does make me weaker too, I guess, Real Boom. We're going to see the Polytoad Retreat. Is this Palafin coming in? Oh, I don't think you ever want to risk the Real Boom, but I will gladly, gladly take your Incineroar and your Real Boom off your hands. I'm not sure if that was ever to play. I know they want to reset Wetter. Maybe they were scared of me turning down the Polytoad or maybe going for that Encore and maybe was trying to do something there, but that Eruption... Picking up the knockout on Sinor, picking up the knockout on Reelaboom, and now your Polytoad and Palafin are trapped in. Yes, you got to reset the weather for one turn, but now it's just Sunny Day is on lock here, and we guarantee the Sunny Day no matter what, and just make sure that we can go for... Ah, I don't really have to go for Eruption at this point. I could switch out and just save the Typhlosion for the end game. yet is there really a Pokemon I need in the... Is there really a reason to? I guess I could always go Tauros. Tauros is super safe here. Yeah, Tauros is just super safe. And we could just keep the Typhlosion around for Shadow Ball. Yeah, I like that, actually. Let's go for a Sunny Day. Let's go for a Tauros switch. We get an Intimidate off into the Palafin. I guess the only way Palafin could get scary here if it's a, a bulk upset. Or some kind of weird setup here. But we should be good. 
Eflosion, you've done good work. Hopefully we don't get Scald burned if they did go for Scald into the into the Taurus stock, because that would not be ideal. I still think King Gambit should be able to win this endgame pretty easily. Because now I can afford to go for the Terra guaranteed with my King Gambit because I don't have to worry about taking so much from like a wood hammer from the real boom in game since they gave me that. Uh, they go for a helping hand. They go for jet punch into the whimsicott. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. I think they were trying to do like a sunny, an icy wind sequence to lower my speed and hope that Palafin out spent the whimsicott so they could go for helping and jet punch and avoid another sunny day. But because the cover cloak was just such a disruptive item here, it's really not going to help out. So I can go for pretty much anything at this point. I can encore log. I can moon blast. All I have to do is just get damage off. And I think I'm going to go for a Moonblast close combat into Politoed. This battle is going to be forfeit. Yeah, there was a really just super slim shot. of. I, I don't even think they could win realistically. Uh, maybe, again, they had to be a very specific... Pol uh, they had to be very specific sets here. They had to get every call right. And even then, it just looked really bad. <laughs> Incineroar, Como, Rillaboom, Clefable, Rotomwash, Golden Go. That Como can be very scary. Very scary. With Clangorous Soul, uh, that could be very hurtful. But I do like the Typhlosion and the Whimsicott. I do think that Sunny Day Eruption does go pretty dang strong here and i really do think it goes pretty strong here so i do think that these two are fantastic do what do i want for my partners i probably want i want probably i don't know if i want blood moon blood moon's okay i don't think it's necessary here poros can do a lot i could see the mouse hole doing quite a bit here with the redirection support I kind of like mouse hold but i do get walled by the golden go and a population does do a lot of work redirection is also really nice so i actually think i think it's probably tauros plus mouse hold i could see myself going to blood moon but the reason i'm kind of leaning away towards blood moon is blood moon is just generally not a fast pokemon so i'm kind of curious on like it to como outspeeds the blood moon after one clangor soul even if i get tailwind up because this this is modest blood moon it's not timid so i think i could actually see the como potentially outspeeding if it has a lot of speed and i just don't think that's ever worth it this is a perfect lead for me here this is como plus the uh the real boom and this is a free sunny day eruption here like absolutely free sunny day eruption they do not have any good switches here i get to blow up their team so this seems really strong. Uh, we should be doing a lot of damage to Como. So let's go for that eruption. Let's go for that sunny day. And what's also interesting is, well, I also do threaten Moonblast too. <laughs> I dress a Moonblast into Como. So do I want to go for a Moonblast or do I want to go for sunny day? I think I'm just going to go for sunny day because there is a chance that the Como is like Terra Fire or something. So I'd rather just go for a sunny day, get the consistent amount of damage guaranteed into Como. This is a really tough spot for them. <laughs> this is a really tough spot for them. So we'll see what they can do here because you can't. I guess maybe you hope that you can fake out my Whimsicott and go for the Clangor Soul. The problem is I'm pretty sure that the Sunny Day Eruption is going to do so much to Como. It probably has enough HP remaining to go for another Clangor Soul. But then I just go for Tailwind. The only unfortunate side is I can't go for an Encore into Como because there's a chance it's soundproof. We are going to see the Como go for the Terra. It is Terrifier. Yep, exactly. Okay. Which makes a ton of sense. So, the sunny day here. Perfect. Let's see what they decide to go for. They go for Fake Out. Excellent. Into my Woman's Cot. And we do get the sunny day because we are Cover Cloak. We go for this big, big eruption into the Como and the Rillaboom. Oh, that's so much damage. If I Terra fired, I actually guaranteed the Como wasn't getting Clangor Soul, but I think it does. Barely. Like, actually barely. Yeah, it does go for Clangor Soul, but you're at so low health at this point, and I can go for Tailwind guaranteed the next turn. I'm guaranteed to Tailwind as well. I don't see the Como being able to do much even with your Clangor Soul, so beautiful. I think what they would have had to make a 
really insane read probably go for a grass they would have probably had to go for grass to glide into the typhlosion but even if they did they're still in a really rough spot clefable comes out uh i'm pretty sure we're gonna see a turn to forfeit here because i don't see them being able to avoid i don't think i terra clefable might be able to live the eruption but i don't think i can terra because there is a chance that incinerator is in the back and i don't want fake out pressure happening uh como gonna protect okay but this is still a tailwind and this is still a choice specs eruption in the sun so i think we could i don't know clefable is a good bulk it might be able to survive this let's see but this is a really powerful hit nah clefable's clefable ain't like that okay <laughs> just click tail and just click eruption oh man it's actually so strong. It is so strong. Let's see what their last is. Is it Incineroar? No, it's a Rotom. Okay. And we are just going to... You know what? Let's go for a Terra. Let's go for an Eruption. Let's go for a Moonblast. Let's guarantee the KO on the Rotom here. <laughs> it's actually crazy. It's actually crazy that they did not have... They just couldn't do anything. I'm trying to see what else they had. They really didn't. They could lower the damage with Grassy Glide, but the thing is, even if they Grassy Glided the Typhlosion, I think you probably what? You probably have to sacrifice a lot. You probably have to go for like Grassy Glide Clanger Soul into, or not Clanger Soul, the Clanging Scales into Typhlosion turn one because I was just doing way too much damage that I just blew up the team. <laughs> Like, i just just doing way too much damage. Get a crit there on Como didn't really... Didn't matter at this point, like... <laughs> this Typhlosion... Just destroying this team. Absolutely obliterating it. And, yeah. Not really much to say. There were two fire resists. With the Terra involved. And, guess what? They took way too much damage regardless. <laughs> Are Caledon, Annihilate, Volcarona, Whimsicott, Politoed, and Rillaboom. You know what looks really, really good into this? Typhlosion, baby. <laughs> Eruption looks crazy against this team. I like Typhlosion a lot. I like Whimsicott a lot. Uh, who, who else do I even need? Do I even need any other partners? Uh, let's see here. I should probably bring Blood Moon as a backup to the Arcaladon. And then last Pokemon, I don't really want to get the Defiant Boost to the Annihilate. So, in Gambit, it makes it a Drain Punch target. I do have Terra as an option though. Mouseholds might not be too bad here actually, because the Redirection might be valuable. I think I'll go with Mousehold for the Redirection. King Gambit is also not a bad pick. Volcarona, if it's Terra Water, that's the one I'm scared of. I think Volcarona with Terra Water is actually kind of threatening. So Mousehold might be useful to help out against the Volcarona. If that's the case. I do have Encore Pressure for the Volcarona, which is nice. We'll find out. I hope this isn't like Terra Water, Terra Blast. We're going to see Annihilate plus Whimsicott. Okay. So I do lead the Typhlosion plus the Whimsicott here. I think that this is a pretty safe eruption. With Terra, because I don't know what this Annihilate set is. It could be Final Gambit or it could just be like a bulk upset. I kind of like the idea of just going for the Tailwind and Eruption. Because it might be Terra Fire. So let's see. I get to do a lot of damage. If I get this read wrong, I get this read wrong at the end of the day. I think that's that's fair. If they Final Gambit me, they got me really good. We'll see. Okay, we do see a Terra, and it is confirmed to be slower than my Typhlosion. This should be Terra. Yep, Terrify. Okay, beautiful. I wonder they they probably Rage Fist immediately, which is nice. So we're going to see Tailwind come out. Okay, yeah. So we're just going for Tailwind, we're going for Eruption. I actually probably shouldn't have Tailwind. No, I should always Tailwind. Yeah, I should always Tailwind. Because then I could get all into Victim of Taunt. Eruption going to come out from the Typhlosion. Do a ton of damage. Going to boost the Annihilate to Rage Fist up by one. That Annihilate took no damage. What? <laughs> that must be... Is that a Solvest Annihilate? That's a, that looks like a Solvest Annihilate. Okay. Yeah, they did go for Rage Fist immediately. All right. 
Uh, that did a lot, actually. Wait, no, it's leftovers. Wow, Annihilate. That honestly took a lot less than expected. I'm going out into Mousehold. And I'm going to Encore the Annihilate. And the reason I'm going to do this is because they could do a Drain Punch to... They could do a Drain Punch into Mousehold. Uh, to cover for, like, the Switch because I had double normals. Oh, come on. We lose the Encore Speed Tie. Actually, is it an Encore Speed Tie? I don't remember fully. If this is Drain Punch, this is really bad. <laughs> if this is Drain Punch, this is really bad. Okay. I do hang on, though. Oh, wait. I am not Max Speed Whimsicott. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay. Uh, eh, playable still. Ironically, it it does not look great, but it's playable. I'm going Blood Moon, and I'm going for Protective Mousehold, and then I'm going to do a Follow Me game. This is really rough, though. This is extremely rough. I'm going to bring out the Ursaluna. And protect the Mousehold. Hoping for like a Moonblast into the Mouse Hold and a Rage Fist into the Whimsicott. That would be really ideal. That'd be really, really ideal. Nice. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Drain Punch shouldn't pick up a Knockout into the Ursaluna. I don't think Moonblast plus Drain Punch does. That could be a close one. I'm going to go for Hyper Voice. I want a hyper voice, but I want to earth power. I kind of want to earth power the annihilate. I think earth power annihilate is fair. I'm a little bit concerned because they could protect. If they protect, I still think it's all right. I think I could play around if they protect. I just don't know if they're going to protect the whimsicott. So they always, oh, they encored. Interesting. Oh, I could have followed me, but that works out. They go for Drain Punch, but it's not like it's a boost in Annihilate, but it was neutral Annihilate. So Earth Power should KO. It's Life Orb Earth Power. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd have been super shocked if we would be able to hang on from that. So perfect. And now we have maneuvered the super big threatening Annihilate. Jeez, Annihilate is bulky. I did not expect Annihilate to take the Eruption that well. That one peers out, but acceptable. Very acceptable. Let's see who they bring out next. Because I can go for quite a few plays. Actually, now that I know that I have to slow the Whimsicott, they are probably just going to go for... Okay, Volcarona comes in. That's a scary mod. I used my Terra, unfortunately. I go down the Heat Wave? I have bulk on the Whims. I think I always Tailwind... And I guess I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice. Yeah, I should Hyper Voice here. They're going to Tailwind themselves, so we're going to match our Tailwinds. Did I lose to Volcarona? I think it comes down to does Heat Wave pick up two knockouts here. Oh, they went for Quiver Dance. Oh, that's greedy. I can Encore to Quiver Dance, so that's fine. They didn't have Redirection in the back, right? I don't think they did. But I should be fine. Yeah, here comes Hyper Voice. Does a ton of damage to the Whimsicott. Beautiful. All right, who's the last? Or Caledon. Uh, could get dicey, I suppose. I think it comes down to. Oh, geez. I am going to Encore attempt to the Volcarona and I Earth Power ER Caledon. I don't know. I feel like you should know that I have Encore, right? Hmm. I think my best play might be to sack the mouse hold. Because they might attempt to go for like a flash cannon into the Whimsicott slot to get rid of the Whimsicott. Well, actually, they don't know my item. Yeah, they don't know my item. Actually, I should Encore to Volcarona to be safe and Earth Power to Arcaladon. Nice. Okay, with the Volcarona trapped like that, I think I can... I think I sealed this game. I think. Because they're locked into Quiver Dance. So, the game, I guess, could still go wrong. Let's see who the Arcaladon targets. Body Press in the Blood Moon. Okay, that's fine. What item is your Volcarona? 
I think what item is evoke Corona might also help figure. Oh, geez. All right. We go into mouse hold. We encore the Arcaladon into body press because body press does not pressure the Whimsicott slot at all. So we go for the encore into our Caledon. We go for a population bomb into Volcarona. Don't be Rocky Helmet, Volcarona. <laughs> and I think we're okay. Don't be Rocky Helmet, Volcarona, and I think we'll be okay. Encore into our Caledon. Okay, Quiver Dance again. Yep. So it's like, what, plus three? Either way, we should be okay. Population bomb. One. It's not Rocky Helmet, so we're good. Flame body. I think we're still fine because we should KO. Assuming we hit every population bomb that we need. A nice crit there for extra damage in case we needed it. But uh, looks like we're hitting all our population bombs. Perfect. Okay. I think we have the game sealed. I think we have the game sealed. They body pressed the Whimsicott or it was random targets. It might have been just Flash Cannon in that slot. Mousehold goes down thanks to the burn. I still think I have to hit a move with Typhlosion, I guess. But it's looking really, really nice for victory. We bring out Typhlosion. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think I always click just Overheat. It's the same accuracy as Heat Wave. So I should have this. It's sunny day. Also, body press might not KO if I don't land the attack. <laughs> there is that chance as well. 90, 90. Yep, so I, I go for overheat. I could eruption, but I don't think it's enough. But let's see. I want to see this big nuke. Let's see this overheat. Of course, I I, I knew I had a feeling. I, I knew I had a feeling. I had a feeling. It doesn't KO Typhlosion, though. Okay. Just... Don't miss the second one, please. I'm going for a Moonblast for extra damage and overheat as well. As we do outspeed every Arcaladon with this Typhlosion. Special attack drop doesn't matter. We might be able to win with Encore locking with Moonblast, but let's not have to. Overheat going to come out into the Arcaladon. This is Choice Specs Terrifier. Blowing up Dark out on A critical hit on top of that just for extra damage and... Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Uh, absolutely love to see Typhlosion blow up a team like that. You just love to see it. <laughs> Kanto, Ninetales, Gastrodon, Palmod, Venusaur, Scizor, and Hydreigon. All right. I'm game for this. A Sun Mirror. I really do love the Typhlosion though. Plus, Wim's got Tailwind Eruption looks very very strong here so i'll gladly take it in the back how would i want this uh because these two are fantastic together i'd probably want i want blood moon i feel like blood moon does do a lot of damage but hmm we do have to be palm yeah i'm gonna go with blood moon actually i think blood moon's okay then in the back maybe mouse hold mouse hold does do a lot I could also bring the Poros because they don't really have the best close combat switches other than Venusaur. But I think I'm just going to go Mouse Hold. Population Bomb looks really, really fun into their team. And I don't know if they're going to bring Scizor against the Typhlosion team, but we'll see if that's the case. It might be their only really normal resist, so they might be forced to bring it. And if they do, I still have very powerful Earth Powers that do threaten the Scizor. And if they do Terra to avoid the fire move, then they don't have a normal switch in. We're going to see Nine Tails and Venusaur. Don't be Flash Fire. Don't be random Flash Fire Nine Tails. Okay, it is just standard drop. Perfect. Now, of course, the Venusaur could be Focus Sash, but I am just going to go for a powerful eruption and I am going to go for Tailwind. There really should not be too much risk here. If it is Focus Sash, that's okay. We get a huge amount of damage against this side of the field. Uh, Nine Tails could go for a Protect, I guess, so it doesn't take as much damage, but I think that's all right. We're going to see a Terra straight from the Venusaur immediately into the Terra Fires. So being forced to Terra immediately, completely acceptable. Don't mind that too much. Let's go for that powerful eruption. Let's see how much damage we do under this Tailwind. We might have a Sleeping Typhlosion here, I guess. Let's figure it out. Eruption. 
Good damage. Oh, they went for slush bomb. They didn't even go for a sleep powder. Okay, perfect. Boom Scott goes down. What's the nine tails going for? Life orb Venusaur. Heat wave. All right, we gladly take those. We gladly take those. Beautiful. And now, what would I want to go out into? Probably Mouse Hold. I could also go out into Blood Moon. I think I would rather go Mouse Hold. I think Mouse Hold just because it has redirection. I guess the Blood Moon does have more damage output. But we can go for an Eruption and we can go for Population Bomb. And I just can't see anything wrong with that. I'm going for the Ninetales slot because I'm actually a little bit worried if Eruption doesn't KO the Ninetales after we took the Heat Wave damage. But I'm pretty sure we do. Like Hydreigon can't switch in, which is the big part. Hydreigon, Scizor, Palma, Gashadon. Maybe gash it on if it switches in on the Venusaur slab and the Ninetales protect. Well, actually, yeah, if the Ninetales protects and the gash it on switches, sure. But Venusaur are going to protect. It might just be a double protect here, which is fine. They're stalling on Tailwind turns. All right. But the Ninetales did not protect. So I do get rid of the Ninetales. And now we get to see the remaining Pokemon. All right. Corruption going to fail. Maybe it's Scizor. Maybe they're trying to... Oh, even if it's Scizor, like, what can they do? Like, maybe they were trying to go for a bullet punch play, but it doesn't work because I have follow me on the mouse hold. Like, I, 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 I don't know what they could really do here. Gastrodon comes in. Okay. Eruption population bomb is pretty safe as long as I hit my moves. <laughs> I just got a lot of tailwind eruption. It's like Torn Ogre in this, uh, in this format right now. It just feels like Torn Ogre. <laughs> just click tailwind and water spout eruption just powerful attacks but you don't have that wetter so it's not as absurdly broken but being immune to fake out setups is so nice all right population bomb as long as we hit the gashadon we're good i sit okay citrus berry i think if we hit three more we're good six seven Okay, we should be good. Eruption should KO at that range. Uh, we got a critical hit even. I don't know if that mattered. I don't know if we would have knocked out Gastron. By the way, Technician Population is so absurdly strong. 10 hit move. A 10 hit move is just too insane. And then Eruption finished off the Venusaur. <laughs> uh, yeah, like how do you how do you stop it? How do you stop it? Watch, the last one's going to be Scizor and that one's going to get Omega cooked. <laughs> Show me Scizor. Show me Scizor. If it's Palma, we're still good. Hydreigon. Okay, yeah. Like, they had a fire switch in, but it's like the same thing trying to switch into Kyra Water Spout and Rain. Like, it's not really a switch in. These moves are just too strong. Population Bomb. Eruption. I guess if we missed every single Population Bomb ever and I misplay, they could have won. Like, if they Dark Pulse the Hydreigon here, Population Bomb missed, I go to Blood Moon, Tailwind's over, they go out into... I go into Blood Moon, I don't click Follow Me, they Draco crit my uh, Blood Moon while dodging another Population Bomb, and then they just keep dodging Population Bomb. Yeah, sure, they could win. But I'd be clicking Follow Me and Blood Moon and guaranteeing to win on that Hydreigon. So, I'd be fine there. Oh, I love to see a team that's just reached a sunny day plus Hisuian Typhlosion. They do have tools though, and Cinnamor is definitely something that can threaten the Typhlosion. Gotta still respect it. They have Wide Guard on potential Pelipper, but I do love a Whim's God Typhlosion lead. Overall, pretty strong here. Blood Boon, really good. And then I think in the back, I do like my Tauros as an a good Pokemon to pivot around and the Incineroar. A lot of this game is just how well weather can be managed and how well Typhlosion can be put into a position to potentially sweep this team. If I take too much damage early, it's pretty bad. I also got to watch out because because Pelipper run, runs Weather Ball, they have an accurate move to hit my Whimsicott even under the sun. Hurricane 70% chance or 50% chance actually because under the sun it's 50% accuracy. Weather Ball, 100% accuracy, transforms into a fire type move, which... We'll see how I want to manage here because I got to be careful because if I do Sunny Day in front of a Pelipper lead, then they actually can hit my Whimsicott with the Weather Ball. And that does do a lot as that will threaten the KO. 
Para wise, I'm not sure. It could be Typhlosion because if they lead like an Incineroar knockoff is something I'm a little bit concerned about. If they don't lead like Pelipper and Incineroar, I feel pretty comfortable with leads in general. Ooh, did they time out? They might have. If they timed out, that is not good for them. <laughs> it is not good for them. Terra wise. <sighs> Whimsicott could be my Terra option as well. I do have the Terra water. I'm not 100% certain. Let's figure out what they're leading. They did lead Pelipper or Caledon. That, I don't know if that's supposed to be a timeout or not. That could have just been the original lead that they had planned to go for. But we do see the Drizzle activate. I think my safest play is just to go for a sunny day, tear a water with the Whimsicott, and go for an eruption into the Arcaladon. Sunny day overheat might just blow up the Arcaladon while the Pelipper can't go for a strong weather ball into my Whimsicott if they expect a sunny day. They might go for Wide Guard too, which is fine. So I might have wasted my Terra, but like Terra on Whimsicott still not too bad because it means Incineroar can't Flare Blitz me for a knockout eater. So I just can pivot the Tauros around. Let's see. Sunny day, no Wide Guard coming out. I wonder if it's a weather ball and which slot over he gonna come out. That kiss that Typhlosion just blew, but unfortunately does not pick up the knock on Arcaladon. However, still pretty good damage to Arcaladon as what are we gonna see? Weather ball gonna be fired off. It targets down the Typhlosion. Okay, so it's just a regular weather ball and what's Arcaladon going for? Snarl. Not pleasant because the Typhlosion took a bit more damage than I was hoping for, but still not too bad. I can go for a Moonblast into Arcaladon, and I can swap out my Typhlosion. I think I'm going to go out into Blood Moon here. Yes. I got to be careful now because the Reelaboom, if it's in the back, is actually very concerning. But yeah, I was hoping not to see like a Wetter Ball there from the Pelipper. At least Wetter Ball into the Typhlosion. I thought Sunny Day was something that they would consider but all right also the arcaladon surviving the overheat just how bulky arcaladon is is absolutely absurd but we should still be in a pretty okay position arcaladon one of their main biggest damage dealers is super weakened that's just going to go down to any hit at this point i am going to target down to arcaladon i guess i could have encored and went tauros but i don't want to switch in tauros on the potential if they go for hurricane if they go for Hurricane into the Typhlosion, I'd be super upset. I don't think Weather Ball picks me up at this range either, so I don't think they're going to Weather Ball to Ursaluna. But we are bringing it in. They stay in with Pelipper. Moonblast going to pick up the knock on our Caledon. So our Caledon goes down. What are you doing with Pelipper? They actually went for the 50% Hurricane. No confusion, though. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, might be getting a bit too absurd here. Might be getting a bit too absurd. A real boom gonna come in, which is okay. I don't need tailwind up if they're. I don't think they have tailwind. I just don't see them going for tailwind. Problem is, we took a lot of damage, which I'm not pleased about. I'm going for a moonblast into Pelipper, I think. And I think I'm going to go out into the Typhlosion. Or not Typhlosion, Tauros. Because I do need to break a Pelipper's Focus Sash. I need some damage onto it. If this is Grassy Glide into the Whimsicott. I like that. I can't believe they went for the 50% Hurricane, man. <laughs> I really cannot. All right. Let's see if this works out. Because I would really love... Moonblast damage into the Pelipper. If they switch out now, they do switch out now. Okay, they got me there. Into a Moongus. That's not good for me. Well, it, it's like okay. It's not awful, but it's not great. We bring out the Tauros, which does get intimidated off into the Rillaboom. Uh, who are you grassy gliding? This should be grassy gliding to Blood Moon then. Or fake out. That makes sense too. That's. It. That shouldn't matter too much. Moonblast into the Amoongus just does no damage. Okay. But I can on. Here's the thing. I can encore your 
Rillaboom. So are you switching out or are you staying in? Moonblast close combat would knock out the Pelipper. So I think this might be a raid based play. Unless they want a Rage Powder. Rage Powder makes sense too. I am just going to attempt to Encore to Rillaboom in close combat. The Rillaboom as well. Because if it's Pelipper, I get to at least break a Sash. If they stay in, I get a good amount of damage into the Rillaboom. So they do stay in, which is beautiful. So I do get the Encore lock. Nice. And a huge close combat into the Rillaboom as they attempted to Grassy Glide, I believe. All right, Rillaboom heavily pressured the next turn, which is nice. Spore into the Taurus. Okay. Now, how crazy do I want to make my plays here? I could Sunny Day. I re actually, uh, I kind of want to make a crazy play here. I don't know how, ah, uh, this is just so bad. The early turns were not good. Sunny Day makes sense here. Because Rillaboom should be switching out into Pelipper. The question is, what am I doing with you? I think going into Typhlosion makes sense. Because then Heatwave is going to do so much damage. We also get Grassy Terrain healing. So we're definitely not in Weather Ball range. We might be forcing a Terra from the Amoongus though. Probably Terra Water. They do switch out the Rillaboom into the Pelipper. Yep. Okay. I imagine this is a spore attempt. They could spore my Oro slot if they anticipate the reads. Sunny day going to come out. I don't think they have wide guard by how they were playing. Of course, they they might have it. <laughs> they might have it. But I'm going to burn turns with Whimscott and I'm firing off a heat wave. A heat wave is doing so much damage, especially if they switch out Pelipper to reset the weather. I have no idea if they will this time, but... Uh, just why not go for the heat wave at this point? Amoongus could protect, but Pelipper can't knock out the Typhlosion accurately. So we might need some RNG in this. A safe play for them would be to just Terra the Amoongus and go for Spore, which I'm kind of okay with, because I would just be able to stall out the sleep turns and then potentially get the Blood Moon in under Tailwind. Which would be nice. Also, Amoongus not resisting the Tauros attacks would actually still be pretty solid. We are going to see a Terra come out. All right. It should be Amoongus. Uh, maybe I just play too aggressive like the first few turns. All right. Amoongus, Terra Water. Whims guy stays asleep. Heat Wave, please connect. Nice. Big damage. Really good damage across the board. They go for Tailwind here. Why did they go for Tailwind? And they spore the Typhlosion. Okay, so we just have a bunch of Pokemon to sleep, which is fine. Whimsicott, if you wake up here, would be amazing because I am I would Encore Lock the Pelipper into Heat Wave or into Tailwind, which would be so good for me here. I'm guaranteed to sleep with Typhlosion. We are playing Amoongus Lottery right now with Spore. And Pelipper does still does not have the most accurate moves that it can punish me with. So let's see. There's a lot they could do here. Pelipper retreats in the real boom. Okay. That means that Typhlosion is still around on the field. So I am okay with that. Women's guy stays asleep. So that's probably the better of the worlds. Typhlosion's fast asleep. All in puff. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think of it. They're trying to go like Pelipper, for instance, here. Are they going to try to go Pelipper? Grassy Terrain disappears, so their firepower is a lot, lot weaker. I think I'm okay with attempting a Sunny Day Heat Wave here. If I get this, I am in such a good position. Let's see. Oh, actually, it's still not an amazing position, but I'm still in a better position than I was previously. Let's see if they retreat the Amoongus into like a Pelipper and go for the, uh, I don't know. If they go for Fake Out, I mean, I just Encore it. So I, I don't know what that really buys them. I don't have to Encore the, I don't even have to Encore the next turn. 
uh, because I could Tailwind and Heat Wave, assuming that I think Typhlosion won't get a three turn sleep. Rillaboom gonna retreat. Oh, in the Pelipper? If both of you wake up right now, we're in a fantastic, fantastic spot. I would love a wake up. At least give me one wake up. Whimsicott waking up is huge. Getting a sunny day is massive into the Pelipper. Typhlosion, if you wake up, we're in. <gasps> Oh my goodness, let's go. <laughs> let's go. That's the thing about playing too passive here when you have the offensive advantage, but yep, they spore my Whimsicott perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. My end game is going to be Typhlosion next to the Blood Moon in the end game. So my play here. Go for whatever Whimsicott, because you're you're gonna be sleeping. They still have Tailwind up, so I do go down to Woodhammer. I am gonna go Tauros on this slot. It's their last turn of Tailwind. And then once Tailwind's over, because I got this Intimidate into Reelaboom, the Typhlosion will outspeed the Reelaboom and threaten the knockout. Also, we should I think we confirmed it was Assault Vest by how well wait, hold on. Our Kaladon was definitely Assault Vest. We don't know the Reelaboom item. It's probably Miracle Seed. But that means it could have Protect, which actually makes it still an ugly potential endgame. A Typhlosion, but the Intimidate from Taurus is going to be huge here. Yeah, the fact that this, that this, uh, Rillaboom actually has the potential for Protect is actually kind of annoying. Uh, the Taurus goes down to the Woodhammer. Perfectly acceptable. They went for the last ditch KO there. Scott stays asleep. And spore into a slot. All right. Gonna come down to Typhlosion. And when Peter's out, we can go out into Typhlosion. Oh man, this could go. <laughs> this could go really poorly. E Wave looks like it does massive amounts of damage. I'm trying to see what the win con is. If I. Don't if they do have protect on Rila. I think we still want to moonblast a uh, Moongus and go for a heat wave, regardless. Because Whimsicott can go for an <sighs> the Encore strat doesn't work here because they could rage powder. Wait, they're gonna forfeit. Oh, wait, does the real boom not have protect? They also had the option to go for a Heat wave dodge. Unless they thought I was going to eruption and guarantee the KO, but I don't think I saw the full move set on the real boom. We saw fake out at Woodhammer. I don't remember we saw Glide, and I don't think we saw any other moves than those potential two or three, so it could have been winnable for them, but <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, th those early turns were not pleasant, and I also thought I was coined our Caledon, but. <laughs> Maybe I read a bit too much on the early turns. <laughs> All right, to simply sum up most of the games, Typhlosion, Whimsicott, if you don't have a respectable answer to Sunny Day Eruption under Tailwind, it's just really difficult. And we saw a lot of that in today's episode. The only really differences that could have been scary were the Annihilate game where the Terra Fire Annihilate was actually pretty threatening. And I had to make a lot of plays to get around it. I think, A, knowing my Whimsicott wasn't guaranteed faster, so I definitely should have played better with the Encore Mind game, as well as there was a play, if I was expecting, like, a Terra that resisted the fire, as well as the attack from the Annihilate in the Rage Fist, I could have actually switched out Typhlosion because it did bait the uh, Terra Fire immediately. I could have went into, like, Blood Moon or the Mousehold immediately, and that would have actually put on a lot of offensive pressure, so that could have been a, definitely a great play in the turn one. And then against the Palapar or Kaladon, I think I could have definitely played a bit better. I think I kind of respected a bit too much with the weather ball, like mind games, especially because I did allow my women's got to be put into a really weird position with the real boom and not being able to like guarantee the immunity to spore. So it did end up being awkward there, but there were definitely a lot of turns that I just got wrong, but I think I was able to come back, especially with decent sleep luck towards the end of the game, at least. But uh, it's definitely the first few turns could have used some polishing up. Maybe just going for immediate offense, for instance. I could have just went for maybe eruption straight away. I could have maybe 
just uh, led differently and put on more pressure against the Pelipper with like maybe mouse hold population bomb. Definitely a lot of things I think that could have been looked over. Overall, his Suyin Typhlosion actually seems really strong. It really did remind me of like a Torn Ogre combination where it's able to do a lot of damage to the tail and eruption. It's really nice that we don't have to worry about the Urshifus because those Pokemon basically made his Suyin Typhlosion not really be able to be usable because of Sucker Punch, Aqua Jet, super threatening to the typhlosion but in general it's actually like a pretty strong option i think in this regulation i think manual sun has a lot a lot of benefits in this format if you would like to check out the details of the team and the creator they'll be linked in the description down below if you'd like to try out the team the rental code is on this screen hopefully it's still available by the time the video comes out but otherwise subscribe to the channel for more vtc content as always